The first is an improvised bass line called Mahonera. The second is a yodeling style, almost a scat singing kind of technique called Huru. And then there's a singing style involving a, a poetic text called Kudakatera. And this is the only part of the song that actually has words. Um, for instance, with, uh, with the Mahonera line for this song, Nyamaropa, you might hear, Jao Awo, Jao Awo, Jao Awo. That's a Mahonera line, the improvised bass line. The the Huro style is, What a ye 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 Now those two vocal styles have the same exact meaning that little Richard intended when he sang a wop bop a luma a wop bop bop it's uh imitating a rhythm or improvising a bass line humming a, a line the three lines of text kuda katera lines in this song uh, that i learned from chartwell dutiro who is thomas mafumo's zimbira player uh the first line is which means, are you going to smile when the problem comes? The second line is, But I'm going with my father. Are you going to smile when the problem comes? And then there's finally this line, which means, hammer the arrow in deep. When I asked Chartwell Dutero about this last one, the, the arrow line, he said, it is a metaphor. In other words, press the point. Understand these lyrics. Understand that they are metaphors and apply them to your life. So this is Niyama Ropa.
show, say get it on a more show, yeah. Yeah, who in the wind on a baba? Oh, Musha show, say get it on a more show, yeah. Yeah, oh, Ruby Adam Zivy, Ruby Adam Zivy, Ruby Adam Zivy. Ruby Adam Zivy, Ruby Adam Zivy, Ruby Adam Zivy, a warrior in the woman than a baba. Oh, Mushashu, Segarera, and a Mushashu. Yeah, oh, yeah. to smile when the problem comes. It's a very powerful sentiment. And very similar to the one expressed in the old African-American spiritual, Mary Don't Weep, which I'm going to play here on a, an instrument in gandanga tuning. A gandanga tuned in Bira is in the Phrygian mode. Kind of a haunting sound. This is Mary Don't Weep. Oh, if I could, I surely would Stand on the rock where Moses stood Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep Mary had three links of chain And on each link was Jesus' name Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep One of these nights about twelve o'clock This old world's gonna reel and rock Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Moses stood by the Red Sea shore and smote the water with a two by four. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Brothers and sisters, don't you cry There'll be good times by and by Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't mourn Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep Mary had three links of chain And on each link was freedom's name Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Another song about overcoming suffering is Bob Marley's No Woman, No Cry. Uh, in this song, Marley mentions the government yard in Trenchtown. Uh, Trenchtown was a government-subsidized government housing project in Kingston, Jamaica, where Marley grew up. And the song expresses the poverty and suffering of living in the projects uh, of, of being poor and almost destitute, but always looking at the possibility that everything is going to be all right. This is no woman, no cry. In the government yard in Trenchtown Observing the hypocrites As they would mingle with the good people we meet Good friends we have, oh good friends we've lost Along the way in this bright future, you can't forget your past. So dry your tears, I say. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. No Little darling, don't shed no tears No woman, no cry Brothers and sisters, don't shed no tears No woman, no cry I said, I remember when we used to sit in the government yard in Trenchtown. And then Georgie would make the fire light, and it was logwood burning through the night. And we would cook cornmeal porridge, of which I share with you. My feet is my only carriage So I gotta keep pushing through But while I'm gone Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be all right now. Everything's gonna be all right. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. Oh, no woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. In the government yard in Trenchtown And then Georgie would make the fire light And it was logwood burning through the night And we would cook 
cornmeal porridge Of which I share with you My feet is my only carriage So I gotta keep pushing through But while I'm gone Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright now Everything's gonna be alright No woman, no cry No woman, no cry Oh, no woman, no cry No woman, no cry Thank you. Thank you. We're going to do a piece called Nemama Sasa. Nemama Sasa literally means temporary shelter. It comes from a time in Zimbabwe when ancient hunters would go out in search for game for days at a time and they would build little temporary shelters, lean-tos from the branches of the Musasa tree. This particular version is what's known as a story song. It's, it has a story that goes with the, the tune and the story teaches a moral and a, an especially important message for musicians or anyone with a uh, decision to make or a problem to solve. Oh, the hyena was so happy. 
He said, I'm going to eat all this. Two animals together. So he went and he tried to... What if, what if another hyena comes and tries to eat that cow over there? So he went and he tried to eat the cow. But he didn't want to lose the goats. He tried to eat the goats. But he didn't want to lose the cow. The hyena stayed there. Undecided. For so many days. Didn't know what to do. He didn't want to lose either of them, but you see, it was impossible for him to eat both animals at the same time. Eventually, the hyena starved himself to death. So the moral of this story is that you should always decide and do only one thing at a time. Because if you try to do more than one thing at a time, sometimes when you end up, you don't even finish one thing. So next I'm going to do an English folk song. It has been widely recorded. Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan, James Taylor, many others have recorded this song. Uh, you know, Shona, the Shona language and Shona songs in general are highly metaphorical. And different people can take different meanings from the songs depending on their point of view. Uh, when I first started to learn Mbira songs, I asked Hartwell de Tiro about the song Kuzanga. I had heard it meant living happily and free from fear, but Chartwell said it was a song about an old woman singing, uh, stringing beads for the ancestors. And I said, that, this doesn't add up. What, what's the real meaning of the song? And he said, perhaps for the old woman, stringing beads for the ancestors is living happily and free from fear. Uh, another time I, I asked forward Quinda about the song called Shakwi. Uh, Andrew Tracy, the esteemed ethnomusicologist from South Africa, said that it was a song about coming together. But I read someplace else that it, Shakwi was surface water in a field. I asked forward about it and forward said, Shakwi 
is the sound your foot makes when you pull it out of the mud. He said, when you put your foot in the mud, it come together. And when you pull it out, it go chuck. So there seems to be this connective tissue in all the various ways of hearing an Mbira piece. Um, this song, The Water is Wide, also has multiple meanings. Uh, at first, it's a song about a problem to solve, as we saw with our hyena friend in Nemama Sasa. The water is wide, I can't cross over. Uh, later on, it's a song about the ex ecstasy of being in love. And before it's over, it's about the lousiness of love falling apart. So you can get a lot of different meanings from an old English folk song. This is The Water is Wide. The water is wide. I can't cross over, but neither have I wings to fly. Build me a boat that can carry two, and both shall roll, my love and I. There is a ship, and she sails the sea. Loaded deep as deep can be, but not so deep as the love I'm in. I know not how I sink or swim. Oh, love is handsome and love is fine, the sweetest flower when first it's new. But love grows old and waxes cold and fades away like summer do. Build me a boat that can carry two and both shall roll. And both shall roll, my love and I. Thank you. Thank you. Going to bring Adam Snow back on. We're going to do a piece called Baya Wabaya. Baya Wabaya means to spear to spear. And this is a song about a battle, a metaphorical battle. It could be a disagreement between two individuals. It could be an inner battle, uh, a fighting of one's own demons, if you will. It could be a war between nations. But the gist of this story, or the song, is that a person who is in conflict is a person whose world has turned upside down. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, 
Wabaya is a song about a battle, and Bob Dylan has a song about a battle. It's called With God on Our Side. This song was written in 1964, and when I listen to it today, I'm amazed at how timely it still is, nearly 50 years later. Uh, I noticed that Dylan has toned down the lyrics a little bit in more recent performances, but I'm going to sing the original version, no matter who it insults. Oh, my name, it ain't nothing, my age, it means less. Oh, the country I come from is called the Midwest. I was taught and brought up there, the laws to abide. And that the land that I live in has God on its side. Oh, 
all the history books tell it, they tell it so well. The cavalry's charged, the Indians fell. The cavalry's charged, the Indians died. All the country was young with God on its side. The Spanish-American War had its day And the Civil War, too, was soon laid away And the names of the heroes I was made to memorize With guns in their hands and God on their side When the First World War boys it played out its fate though the reason for fighting I never got straight but I learned to accept it accept it with pride for you don't count the dead when God's on your side when the second world war came to an end we forgave the Germans, and then we were friends. Though they murdered six million in the ovens they fried, the Germans now, too, have God on their side. I've learned to hate the Russians all through my whole life. If another war comes, it's them we must fight. To hate and to fear them, to run and to hide. And accept it all bravely with God on my side. Ah, but now we've got weapons of chemical dust. If fire them, we're forced to then fire them we must. One push of a button and a shot the world wide. For you never ask questions when God's on your side. For many a dark hour, I've been thinking about this. That Jesus Christ was betrayed by a kiss. Now I can't think for you, you'll have to decide whether Judas Iscariot had God on his side. So now, as I'm leaving, I'm weary as hell. The confusion I'm feeling Ain't no tongue can tell. The words fill my head and they fall through the floor. That if God is on our side, he'll stop the next war. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. I have one more piece, um, a reflection of my curiosity more than anything else about the blues and some similarities that I've seen between the basic makeup of an Embira composition and a 12 bar blues. Uh, a traditional Embira song has 48 pulses that can be divided into four quarters of 12 pulses each. Now, uh, these quarters could be thought of as uh, or identified by certain implied chord changes. Um, if, you, if you add on to that similarity of chord changes with the fact that the blue notes that we find in the blues scale comes from an attempt to replicate an African scale, which is basically equiheptatonic. That means seven equal tones to the octave, 
which was the original tuning of this instrument and of course has morphed over the years because they like to play them now with guitars and saxophones and trumpets and synthesizers but it's taken on a more western scale now but if you could imagine this scale coming over to the united states and the americas and being replicated as an african scale with the the ubiquitous blue notes uh, if I chop off a little bit at the very beginning of this song, Niamaropa, that we opened with, uh, I, I get a pretty convincing 12-bar blues. So I'm going to end with Jimi Hendrix's Red House. <laughs> There's a red house over yonder, that's where my baby stays. I ain't been home to see my baby in about a 99 and one half day. Wait a minute, something's wrong. The key won't unlock the door. Wait a minute, something's wrong. The key won't unlock the door. I got a bad, bad feeling that my baby don't live here no more. That's all right, though. I still got this in Vera. I go back over yonder, over yonder across the hill. Cause if my baby don't love me no more, I know somebody will. Now listen to this. Across the hill, that's where I came from. I guess I go back over yonder, over yonder across the hill. Cause if my baby don't love me no more, I know her sister will. 